Um, so welcome to Leadership, let me try this over. Welcome to Leadership Soundbites with Roko and Michelle. And this week we are so excited to have a guest, Jan Jana Lafreniere, is that right? Yes, that's right. Oh my goodness. Uh, Manager of Performance Improvement, as you can see in the background, Maricopa County Public Health. And it's interesting, so Jana, <laughs> history, Jana, Roko and I all work together at Sutter Health. Gianna left in December, I think of 2019, right? Yes. So right before COVID hit, <laughs> and went into public health. So I'm sure that's been an interesting journey for you um, as you come together. So this week's topic is on the power of teamwork. And we have Gianna to thank for that topic. And I'm sure you've got a lot of experience with that, with uh, you know a newer team maybe, or a team that maybe is not used to coming together as a team. So I'm gonna kick us off with this week's quote, is that if you wanna go fast, go alone. And if you wanna go far, go together. And thank you, Jana, for that one. There were some others that we had as well. And, and when I think about that, I think about, um, I worked with a colleague years ago and we had our own skill sets of stuff that we could do. But when we came together, it was like leapfrogging. The mm -hmm. amount of, um, progress and everything we were able to make. It was in the database space. So we developed stuff and access database. But I mean, I what I didn't know she knew and what I, she didn't know I knew. And I think that's the power of teamwork when you come together as a team. So what are your thoughts? Well, for me, I love this topic, first of all. Um, I really wholeheartedly believe that people are at the heart of every process. It doesn't matter how great your process is. If you don't have people that are willing to work in it, improve it, tell you what's not working. And, um, and then also knowing that if things are not working, then there's something in the process that's allowing that to not work. That every process is designed to get exactly what it gets. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like the outcome, we have to go back to the beginning sometimes and reinvent. And by doing that with people that are engaged, that care about that work and are empowered to do something about it, that is where magic happens. Mm -hmm. Kind of to your point, Michelle, I heard that like, I am no genius, but I'm really good at picking colleagues that are different <laughs> than me and you think that I don't know. <laughs> and that has like really been uh, put to the test over the last year. Um, with my team that's gone from a team of one that was without a manager and without a performance in, improvement department, really, it kind of dwindled down to one person and wow. we're up to like over 20. Oh my wow. goodness. I know. So how do you build that team, you know, to, so that they are cohesive and all rowing in the same direction and trusting each other? How do you do that? Well, in, in, in a hybrid environment and when we're doing so much online, it's especially difficult, especially for, you know, my team in public health, we're people, people. And so to not have that interaction has been a struggle. So finding ways to be able to do that has really been key. As far as building a team, it had to start slow. Like I had to uh, really prioritize which positions are going to be the ones that can be the leaders and can, can then help me identify and mm -hmm. bring on newer team members. Um, and so that's been really, really key. And it's been interesting because many of the people that I've hired into performance improvement did not have a background in performance improvement. Mm -hmm. They've got a little bit of project management and they've got some coordination and they have a wealth of knowledge about public health and, and systems and policy and all of that. So to be able to kind of um, bring them together and teach them as a cohort has been really, really great. So um, I would say the first thing was picking those uh, top positions and getting a few people that I could really rely on and depend on to help me then create and build the team out from there. Tell me what are we missing? Who do we need? Where are our skills right now? And help me set the vision for this department. Yeah, it's, it's funny when you say that because I was thinking about there was some, I don't know what leader made a quote along the lines of, that, that you can to hire for the mindset and the attitude and the behaviors and you can teach the other stuff right and so that's Absolutely. what I heard with you is maybe you've got project management maybe you've got this other stuff which is a a bent or an inclination toward doing this kind of stuff but I'm not looking that you've got decades worth of 
performance improvement or your lean six sigma or your black belt or whatever it may be because we can teach you that stuff absolutely and it's interesting because when i'm interviewing somebody and i ask a question about tell me a project that you've worked on that's had a positive result that you're really proud of if they just start shout you know um listing topics or awards or experience. That's not yeah. where I'm going. That is not what I'm looking for. I want to see somebody go, oh, I love this question and dive <laughs> in. Like, you won't believe this great thing that I've been working on. And that kind of light um, that wants to see the difference from current state to after state, that's mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. Because I can teach you the process of how to get there. We can work together to do that. We can fill in those holes, but it's that desire to really want to work with people to um, make improvements and, and make work easier for other people. It's that, it, it's a je ne sais quoi, it's that yeah. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it is, <laughs> but there's this um, sense of, I want to be in the service of other people. Mm -hmm. And I may not know exactly how to do that, but I know that that's my mission and my calling. Mm -hmm. um, and then also a few people where performance is my mission and my calling. And it doesn't matter if I'm in public health helping people or in manufacturing or whatever the industry. So a good balance of both of those. Yeah, I love that skill set and the other. Roka, how about you? What are your thoughts around the power of teamwork? Yeah, so I, you know, as we're talking about how to form the team, you know, how to get them together, but you talked about vision. Um, I'd love to get your thoughts on visioning with with a team because for me at least that is the what holds them together. Whenever yeah. there is um, things get wobbly or uncertain, you can always go back to the vision. So I'd love to get your thoughts on the vision. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, setting a vision, <clears throat> I learned a lot of these principles, first of all, in my work with both of you at Sutter Health. I cannot <laughs> tell you what that experience was like to work in an organization that really loved lean, that really got it, and then moving into an agency for um, this just not at that level of maturity yet, where it's just a budding idea. People don't have the vision yet of what it could look like, and especially in government. You don't think that government is going to be you know, um, have tiered, uh, have tiered huddles and we're going to do, you know, safety huddles and, and all of those things that really, um, the team engagement as a priority, but the principles are there. The desire is there. The understanding is there. So it's creating the container and the structure to be able to then deliver it in a package that makes sense to people. Because I believe we have an organization full of servant leaders. Yeah. They are lean leaders. They just probably would not call it that. I know they would not call it that. So being able to say, here's where we are right now. We have a department of one. We have uh, a staff of 800. We went from 500 to 800. Wow. Um, we have a population of 4 million people that we serve. And what do we all have in common? What are our responsibilities within the Office of Performance Improvement? And what we find in government and other organizations too is you get brought in and hired for one role, but in the meantime, all of these other things need to be done. So you have this role, but you're really doing this over here and some over here and a little bit over here. So it's being able to say, everybody is doing everything right now. We have workforce development, we're doing uh, people and culture, we've got uh, performance improvement, we're doing an evaluation system, we're doing strategic planning, all of these things. What do we have in common? And being able to bring people together and say, we're all working on all these different projects, but what is our number one mission? What is the value that we bring to this organization as a group? And once we have that and we really um, got clear about what our mission is and, uh, and what our vision for the future was, that took a little bit of coaching and exploration and research because people that haven't experienced it just don't know what it can be. Mm -hmm. But being able to kind of share uh, opportunities and where um, where my experience has led and what it could be has been really instrumental. And then once we have this shared vision, we know what we have in common, then individually or as a function, how do we, uh, how do we link to that? How do we align to what that mission is? Yeah, I mean, the there's some internal consulting. Yeah, there's just so much in what you said, because like Rocco said at the other at the beginning of it, it's like, how do you get everybody rowing in the same direction? 
And what and what you just described was the process to get everyone rowing in the same direction, right? Do we have clarity on where we're going in the first place, right? Do right. we have clarity on why we're going there? Do we have clarity on what success looks like and how we're measuring that success? Do we have clarity on where we are today? And do I have clarity on the function I have? Because what you just described is all these different things that are happening to yeah. where how the thing that I do, can I clearly see the alignment to where the difference, the impact I'm going to make mm -hmm. on where we're going as an organization? And that's powerful, right? And all of a sudden you don't have people because every part of the organization, you need everyone to keep you going in that direction. But now that I can see my impact, and I can see what I'm doing that, that starts moving us from the micro level to the macro level, that's powerful stuff. And then you get to what you were describing. You were all rowing in the same direction. In fact, we're actually rowing, right? Because it's so funny that you use that metaphor because some of the work that we're doing right now is around employee resiliency. We have an incredibly burned out staff. Yeah. And um, as part of workforce development, you know, that's our role. So we've actually used the metaphor of even before we can row, we've got to get people in the boat. Yeah. Right now people are drowning and swimming and just, you know, dog paddling and just trying to, to keep their head above water. So we have to create the boat, bring it along, say, mm -hmm. get in the boat and then say, all right, here's the direction that we're going. And what I've had to tell um, some of my staff and other team leaders is that you cannot you cannot steer this boat if you're in the back with a paddle trying to row with everybody else. Mm -hmm. I totally believe you got to jump in, you got to share the work, but somebody has got to be at the helm saying, mm -hmm. let's, you know, everybody on the count of three over here, and then everybody over here and on the left side, and, you know, let's go backwards a little bit. And um, somebody that can kind of just take the team, I'm getting them going in the right, in the right way, give everybody a paddle. Let everybody know we're all headed there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The direction. Yeah. Well, no, and part of everybody it has a role. is if you're if you're in it, you can't see from the perspective that you need to see, right? Because exactly. you're just sitting here, you have no idea where the other boats are going. Okay. Right. So you need to be able to come up to go. Okay, a uh, little bit right over here, a little bit left, right? Let's get us back in sync. And you're absolutely right. Roka, have you done like a, have you ever gone um, rapid water rafting? Yes. Well, yeah, but not with real, real rapids. <laughs> okay. It's a treat. It really is a treat. Yes. But there's a reason why they give you a guide that mm -hmm. sits in the back and up higher. Yeah. So he can see what's coming. Yeah. Yes. And, yes. and if there's a weak side, that's where he goes with the yep. paddle. And over yep. here, there's a weak side and goes with the paddle. But um, just sitting in a seat and looking in the back of somebody else and seeing the direction that they're rowing isn't always um, helpful. So, yeah. no, oh no, and I love the way you know you're you're saying that 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 leader is adjusting, right? Mm -hmm. They're flexible, they're nimble, they're going where the need is, and and I think that's one of the key too is that being in a team because it is dynamic you have to be able to ebb and flow as the team ebb and flows so yeah. whatever they need you need to adjust to what they need and not just have one one way of doing things and you have to really care about what it is that they need with mm -hmm. such a new team new to performance improvement i've really taken my mission for this first year to build a foundational uh, expertise and, and understanding of principles and direction. So a lot of staff training, but that varies by person. Because mm -hmm. even a love for public health and a desire for service only goes so far if um, the alignment isn't there and if there's not a, um, a direction and a path forward. Like, what can I learn? What can, mm -hmm. where could I be a year from now with the right opportunities? So it's creating those opportunities for people to develop and shine. So what have you noticed when you think about the power of teamwork? Because you literally went from one person, you joined the organization, and now there's 20. Yeah. And the scope of what you do is well beyond what I'm going to say a typical improvement team would be. So what stands out for you when you think about the power of teamwork and your team coming together, do what they do, that, that a result or accomplishment or something that stands out when you think about that? Um. <clears throat> Gosh, that's a great question. So when I think about 
teamwork and development, getting so many people with so many different tasks in the scope of the work that we do, we meet at least once a week in person and uh, eyes on each other, collaboration, um, even under the best of circumstances, that's hard to do uh, virtually. And so what I was really missing on our team and what I felt was really important was that sense of connection to each other. And so regular face-to-face uh, -face meetings, as well as encouraging them to collaborate by function, find as many opportunities as possible. That's one of our objectives and measures. How many people can you collaborate with, even if it's just pulling in somebody to ask questions, mm -hmm. um, help them out on something like, um, and working in that way. I've also uh, started, started something because our team is growing so fast. And as we add new people, it's really hard to keep track of each other and get to know each other. <laughs> So, so my like, okay, they're, they're just popping up everywhere. Just, everybody's in the boat and everybody's like, who are you? Who are you? What do you do? Um, so it's really exciting, but I wanted to make sure that there was that sense of connection with each other. So as new people come on board, I have them do, uh, it's like an about me page. It's kind of like a recipe for me. Okay. Who am I? You might know me from. What is my true color? What are my gifts? Uh, what can I help you with? What's my favorite tool? What's my motto for the year? And we just do it on a one pager, kind of like um, like a one page slide, like, like a match. Match. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel that. I just feel that. <laughs> Yes, that idea. For public help. <laughs> the example that I used in the template was for Peter Parker. So I just created like, I'm Peter Parker. You might know me as, you know, Spidey. Spider -Man. And my superpowers <laughs> are these certain things, but it's just like kind of an about me. Uh, Peter Parker, we call it the Peter Parker Project. So people come on board and they do their Peter Parker Project. And that's one of the first things that they do. So we can blow it up. We put it on the wall. We share it at our team meetings. And it's just kind of a fun way. Like we have a, like, um, what's a talent that you have that maybe nobody knows? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so powerful to be able to uncover that stuff because all this, we are so much more than the title we hold. Oh yeah. Right. And so all of a sudden now you're bringing the person instead of just the function to the team yeah. and there's got to be powerful connections because it's like um you know i i like that too oh i i didn't know that i need yeah. that skill set i want to learn more about that and i mean there was a fun game that we played one time and it was around christmas similar but not and it was like we all had to discover there were six of us at the table all the stuff that we had in common all these different things it's like are we all wearing underwear today do we all have socks on do we all I mean, literally it was hilarious and then we took that stuff and made a song but I think what you're talking about is what are you doing to tap into the human side of the team Absolutely. to get those connections going because those connections are the things that that create that teamwork right I now know you more than just your function and I want to I want to be around you I want to hang out with you yeah, let's do what, stuff together what are our commonalities it doesn't take long before you realize that somebody in the group is from Chicago and somebody else, you know, likes pickleball. And when you build that, then yeah. some magic happens there. Yeah. And then the other thing that we've done <clears throat> that, again, I took from uh, my prior experiences is to do a one page win at the end of every quarter. Okay. So yeah, I um, wonder where that came from. <laughs> because I'll tell you, in public health, these are not projects that have a beginning, a middle, and an end. We're not yeah. doing DMAIC projects. We're not even doing PDSA projects. We are yeah. creating systems on the fly. We're jumping in wherever help is needed. And it can be a little discouraging at times to realize that the work just goes and goes yeah. and goes and never feels yeah. finished. So at the end of every quarter, we do a little retrospective. I have every person on the team look back and say, what's What's some impact you had in this organization of all of the things that you did, changes were made. You solved yeah. problems. Yeah. They're hard Love to that. emphasize, but let's put that together on one page and then share that with each, with each other. And it's an opportunity to look back and celebrate mm -hmm. a milestone um, and really a goal that you didn't set out to have. Mm -hmm. And then looking back, it's like, wow, I really had an impact on this organization and I made a change. It didn't seem like that at the time, but look at this. Mm -hmm. And then you put those on a wall and we have our wall of wins, which we call the wow. And oh, uh, anybody can walk by and just see all of our one page wins. And it's a really beautiful way to be able to celebrate and share successes that, that our work is invisible. 
a lot of our work is invisible. Yeah. Yeah. It happens, things happen, you know, around yeah. us and because of us, but yeah, I love that what you just said about the one page wins. And it, uh, I know it's probably not the intent of, of the one page wins, but you're developing people to, to reflect. And, yes. and when you build that muscle of reflecting, they'll start to be more present with, with right now, you know, so that they'll, they'll be able to say, ah, oh, I can see progress happening. And so often we don't reflect and it's mm -hmm. hard for people to realize the impact that they have because they don't take the time to actually reflect. And even if it's a, a failure, if they, if they reflect on that failure, they're going to have growth. Yeah. And so there's so much power in just taking the time to reflect and capture that. So I love that you're doing that. Well, and I love that what you said is that there's so many times that, that there's this far out goal, like the vision, the, the purpose of the organization, right? It's never all going to be fixed. Yeah. And so if we wait until that magical time out in the future, we're going to be six feet under or in an urn on someone's mantle, right? We're not going to be around anymore. And that, that, those pauses quarterly or whatever time frame that you have that allows people to look back, because that's when we see how far we've come to your yeah. point. Um, and I just, I, that's powerful stuff because otherwise people can feel defeated. Very much yeah. so. We're talking about social determinants of health yes. and health disparities <laughs> yes. and moving that needle is really tough. But you know what? I did a 5S project on our files and look at how much time is saved. Everything's organized, yeah. know where to find things. And I've worked in organizations where it's kind of like hair on fire, everything's an emergency. Yeah. But public health during COVID, there's been nothing like it. Oh yeah. Nothing no, like sure. it. I'm yeah. sure. So, Stopping, slowing down, yeah. looking back and realizing that it's not just go, 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 but we're having successes along the way. We really are. Let's, let's enjoy those. Well, and I mean, and you guys are role modeling for leaders in the organization that this is how you do it. This is how yeah. you engage people. And if you engage people, then you can have people come together as teams, right? That's yeah. when the teamwork happens because people are engaged. They're ready. They want to make a difference. Right. I love that. Um, I just, I, this has been so fun. And so what I want, and I thank you for your time. It's so awesome to see your face again. I know that we're going to be in person super soon. So I'm yeah. looking forward to that too. Um, and so what I want to do is ask for this session and this topic of power of teamwork, what's something that you want people to walk away with? Jana? Um, I would say build a boat that will stay afloat and then Get some rowers in there that uh, that are willing to help you get to where you need to go. You're not going to do it alone. You, like yeah. I said, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, get people in your boat. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. How about you, Rocco? Yeah, I think it was what Jana was sharing with us about the connection, um, finding out what the team has in common, setting that uh, vision so that they're all headed in the right direction. Um, but it's really about that human connection. I really loved that. Yeah, there is uh, um, someone that I um, had worked with that she referred to the team that we were on as family, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what happens is when, you, when you're in the trenches with people and, and you get to a point where you know them beyond the work that you're doing, you trust, right? Uh, you can play to each other's strengths. You're also at a place that you can be vulnerable and let people know, I really don't know how to do that. Can you help? <laughs> um, and I think that's where the true power is. And I love all the analogies and the boat and the, the rapids to where the leader is sitting up above. So there's so many there's so many nuggets and in, in the analogies mm -hmm. that hopefully people can relate to. So I mean, thoroughly enjoyed it. This is Leadership Sound Bites with Rocco, Michelle, and Jana. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Until next time, uh, thank you. Thank you.